ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is the afternoon weather extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 29th of January. Windy is the word as I do this update. Stormy at times tonight, then again Thursday night. A lot of interesting weather on the board. Let's go to it. Here's the Skycam Network. Uh, we'll begin with a look at our camera from downtown Birmingham. The sky mostly cloudy this afternoon, and the pressure gradient is tightening up. The winds are generally gusting between 30 and 35 miles an hour statewide. We'll go down south. There's a look at Selma. Still some breaks in the cloud cover down in Dallas County. Of course, down below, that's the Alabama River. And at Gulf Shores, the sky partly sunny down there in the Alabama Gulf Coast. But even there, they will catch some thunderstorms tonight. Well, well, very interesting shot there. We've got two strong systems coming at us, one obviously across the plains just west of here, the second one moving into the Pacific Northwest. And that will bring a good round of showers and storms tonight. And then the second one will be Thursday night. And what a gradient. Are you kidding me? At uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon, it's 65 in St. Louis. You cross the front in Maryville, Missouri. It's 9 with snow falling. I mean, we're talking uh, almost a 60-degree swing over 100 miles. That's amazing. And uh, that uh, just a little bit of that will drop in here tomorrow. Thank goodness not that brutally cold air that's up over western Canada. The upper air winds will not allow all of that just to dive south. And, of course, uh, in advance of that kind of front, you've got the potential for some active weather. And sure enough, there is now a moderate risk of severe weather over northeast Arkansas, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, southeast Missouri, and the southern tip of Illinois and Indiana. Now, the instabilities are just so marginal. I don't know if I'd be jumping on that. Certainly, there's a lot of dynamics involved, but the thermodynamics are pretty rotten for this, and that slight risk down into North Alabama, and again, we'll probably see a little thunder tonight. I don't think we'll see that much, but certainly it's going to be windy, and a little low top line of showers could produce some pretty strong winds tonight. And there's a look at our severe weather risk for storm number two. That's Thursday night, and that's uh, primarily down there for the far southern part of Alabama, where the better instabilities will be. We've got a tornado watch up there in that moderate risk area this afternoon. That's valid through 7 o'clock. That's from the Mississippi Delta up into uh, central Illinois, including places like Memphis, Paducah, Cape Girardeau. And so far, no tornado warnings in that box. Uh, those are all severe thunderstorm warnings. The county's in blue. But, boy, what a gradient. Look at that. Wow. It's almost dizzying looking at those isobars there. Uh, the deepest surface low on that chart, 988 millibars. You go down into uh, South Alabama, you got 1,020 millibars. That's the reason it's windy. Again, our winds gusting to uh, 30 to 35 here. Back in Texas, it is really windy. They've got north winds out there. Dallas-Fort Worth today with winds gusting to 54 miles per hour. But look at that. That's the surface-based cape or instability values and hardly any, just barely a little positive cape there through Arkansas, Missouri, up into uh, southern Illinois in advance of that line. And it's just hard to get fired up when you see that. Yeah, we can have elevated storms, no doubt about that, but uh, instabilities just are not there. But don't worry, the wind shear is there. That'll, uh, that's, that's some pretty strong stuff there. That's the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity values maxed out over western Tennessee. In fact, that's almost too much helicity. Sometimes that can destroy an updraft like that. But uh, no doubt the veering is there, but the instability is not. So many times we see that in these early season systems. Bottom line is I just don't think we have a big severe weather issue here tonight. Ooh, boy, that looks good. That'll make you happy. A drought-stricken, parched southeast United States will welcome those colors. That's suggesting 2.9 inches of rain on the high end. I think that's still a little aggressive. I think we'll get about a half inch of rain tonight, about one inch Thursday night. So I really think the, the, the better amounts for here will be one to two inches. But still, that's not bad. So again, we've got the deal tonight, and that'll be on by. Let's look at tomorrow. This is modeling uh, the model output of the 12Z GFS noon tomorrow. Uh, the first wave rotating through New England, the second wave coming across the Rockies. We're in between, so it should be a nice day, a cooler day. I don't think we'll see 50. We'll expect a high in the upper 40s tomorrow, even with sunshine in full force all day. 
Thursday, here comes storm number two. That's midday Thursday. We'll probably see some showers arriving Thursday afternoon, but no doubt Thursday night is the big period. And look at that. That's midnight Thursday night. And like I've talked about for several days, if this were April, that would be screaming major tornado outbreak here. But it's not April. It's January, thank goodness. And there's the surface look underneath that uh, deep surface low over western Kentucky, trailing band of showers and storms. And again, that should bring about one inch of rain. But remember, Thursday morning we'll be in the 20s maybe in spots, upper 20s. And can you get 60-degree dew point air in, in here? No, I don't think you can with such a quick turnaround. Uh, hardly any surface-based instability with this thing. And that should prevent a major severe weather problem. But having said that, anytime you've got those dynamics, you do have to watch it. And yeah, about a million people have emailed us. Yeah, we see the uh, uh, cold on the backside of that, the potential for a few wraparound flurries. And that, that could happen, but uh, shouldn't be a big deal at all. And then Friday, it lifts out. We clear. Weather a bit cooler. We'll be in the 40s all day Friday. Saturday starting off the weekend. Nice. Be around freezing in the morning, but the high should be close to 60. And Sunday, partly sunny. Showers off to the west. I think we'll stay dry. And again, we should be close to 60 on Sunday afternoon. What about next week, you ask? Well, there's Monday's upper air look. And again, this is at 500 millibars. Nice trough to the west. we got a southwest flow aloft here. Surface low develops near Fort Smith, Arkansas. And really, a warm front extending from that is running up through southern Kentucky. And all of the rain with that would be north of that warm front initially. Maybe a few showers developing in the warm sector by Monday night. And then Tuesday, the front comes on through here. That is suggesting a front Monday night. Now, it's going to stall out because it's parallel to the upper airflow. Will it stall out over Montgomery or Birmingham? That will de determine the rain chance on Tuesday. And really, I think it's going to meander back and forth for several days. There's a look at Wednesday. Here comes the next wave on the front. That looks pretty wet. And we might see some rain on Thursday as well. So I get the idea... Monday night through Wednesday or maybe even Thursday of next week could be pretty wet. And a quick peek at the end of this forecast period, Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. And that looks fairly uneventful right there, but hey, you know what that is. It's voodoo country. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the blog, the uh, next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, of course, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless.